I brought the Fujifilm X106 on a trip as my main video camera. There's a lot of good and two bad things you need to know about. This is the Fujifilm X106 and it is the hype machine of the year. As you can see, I have this mist filter on the front. This is a quarter black mist filter and I actually like the footage a lot better without this filter, which I discovered in Las Vegas last month. The reason I have the mist filter on is because this is a limited edition and on my way to the airport for this trip, Rico sent me a screenshot of an X106 that just sold in Japan for about 7,000 USD. The limited editions now appear to be going for $11,000 on eBay. That is very silly. This camera is worth what it's priced at at retail, but definitely not $11,000. But if you do want to spend $11,000 on this camera, let me know. You can buy this exact copy right here, number uh, 0931. I should also mention that the video on the screen you're seeing right now is from the Osmo Pocket 3 because We'll talk about that in a moment. Everything we're going to see in this video was shot at 4K regular, 24p, and dropped into a 24 frame timeline. I do my best to stay close to 180 shutter or at 1 slash 48th of a second shutter, which is possible on this camera, which is very nice, but I don't always. There is a built-in four-stop ND filter, which is wonderful. I've mapped my four-stop ND to the button here on the back, the A-E-L-A-F-L, -E and one press enables it, and you can even enable it while recording a clip. The other setting I changed is I set the front wheel to ISO control. I find the dial up top here a bit tricky to use and it requires me to focus more on the camera than what I'm actually trying to capture. I have my shutter speed set to T on the dial so I can control it from the back wheel. The funny thing is that one of the selling features of this camera is the tactile controls and dials and then I immediately make them redundant. IBIS is also always enabled which is the main upgrade for video with this camera. It makes it usable. There were some early reports of IBIS making the camera hot but I have not experienced that in my use. There's also a setting to set the IBIS to engage only when the camera camera is in active use if you are seeing any issues. Maybe the reason I don't see any overheating is because I immediately turn my camera off when not in use. On that note, the startup time, also very fast. This top function button does come default set to eye and face detect on slash off, and that's where I leave it. And on this trip, like I normally would, I run this camera in autofocus continuous all day with full wide autofocus points. It's pretty rare to have to override anything with the exception of sometimes using face detect on and off with this button. Sometimes it does try to pull to a face that it, or a, an object that it thinks it's a face, but it's not too often anymore. Would I use the camera in this way if I was shooting a Hollywood production? The answer is no, but the answer is also that I would not be using this camera in a Hollywood production. There are better tools for that. The reason I would choose this camera is when you need something really powerful, but also small enough to bring with you and that actually fits inside a jacket pocket. I did mention at the beginning that this is the Osmo Pocket 3 I'm talking to and not recording it on this camera. There are a few reasons. One is a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. It's just too tight to try to self film with it. You can get the wide angle 28 millimeter adapter, but I still feel it's too tight for traditional self filming handheld. That said, maybe that's a way you can push yourself to look a little bit different and do things a little bit differently than you usually would. Film simulations and colors from this camera might be worth the inconvenience. Speaking of film simulations, everything you've been seeing so far in this video was shot in classic neg. I actually love this film simulation for video. I know a lot of people prefer Eterna since it's a more proper film stock, but I am very happy classic neg. The weight and balance of this camera feel better than the X100V. The V feels a little bit too light, which makes the camera kind of feel a little bit cheaper. With the addition of IBIS in this, it added a few grams of weight, and now it feels really solid. I would love to have another physical wrap in the future. The grip of the GFX 102 is beautiful, and I would love to have even 60% of that feeling when it comes to this black leather style grip. Another thing I accidentally discovered is that if you hit this front button here, you can set your control ring on the lens on the front to film simulations. When Fujifilm Canada gave me my first pre-production unit a few months ago, this camera came set to that by default. I thought it was absolutely crazy that you would need such quick access to film sims, but I was wrong and Mr. Fuji was right. It's incredibly nice to be able to frame up a scene and cycle between a few film simulations while seeing the full preview. If you load it up in the Q menu, the full screen is obstructed a bit and it's just not as nice. Unfortunately, to add a fully articulating screen, you can see how flush the screen is and uh, it's also a tilt screen. So it does pop up like this, but it does not fully articulate out to the front to give you a selfie screen. Some other very nice things you can press down on the dial. So if you press it down, you actually set their functionality, which is really useful on the back as well. And you can charge this camera by USB-C, which includes the ability to use a portable cell phone style charger to recharge your camera on the go. Now you do get one very annoying 2.5 millimeter mic input on here, 
which is a bit of a bummer, so you need an adapter to pretty much use any other microphone or wireless system, and that makes me pretty sad. That said, the built-in mics are pretty decent. Overall, this is an incredible travel companion. There is limited or almost no post-production required on most of the footage, and this thing is just a heck of a lot of fun to use. Let me know if you have any other questions and get in on my free full-length audiobook if you're interested in making a really nice business in wedding photography. You get to create something of value for someone that will be passed down from generation to generation, plus you get paid pretty well also. See you next time.